Excellent. I see that a lot of you are saying hi in the chat. Hi, everyone. So thank you very much for joining us today. My name is Carla Plasencia, and on behalf of the student world, I welcome you to this live session study in Hong Kong. I hope this session will help you to learn about uh, all the amazing opportunities that Hong Kong has to offer. Um, I'm going to explain to you real quick how this webinar will work. Um, the chat is perfect as you're using it to say hi, but if you have any questions during the presentation, please type them on the Q&A window, which is your second window of your chat tab. I will be tracking all the questions there and we will have a Q&A session at the end. We also have some handouts from some, some of the institutions that are with us today. So you can download them directly on the platform, just clicking on the handouts um, window, which is the fourth one of your chat tab. And perfect. So now we would like to introduce you to the four amazing institutions that will be with us today. We have um, Hong Kong Baptist University, the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology, City University of Hong Kong, and Lingnan University. Thank you so much, guys, for being here with us today. And I don't want to take any of your time, so let's begin with the presentation. Okay, so um, I'll take the link to actually go first. So uh, in the next five minutes, I will I will uh, touch on some of the aspects. Also, um, again, um, I'm Frank from Hong Kong Baptist University. So, uh, but in the first five minutes, I will try to represent Hong Kong for those of you who are here, um, who might not have a, a quick overview of Hong Kong. I'm going to tell you in five minutes about what Hong Kong is about. And, um, Hong Kong. So uh, first of all, I think this photo actually represents uh, it. Some of you might have seen this somewhere in any kind of brochures before. Um, can you, if you have actually been to Hong Kong, we would like to know. So if you have been to Hong Kong, please leave a quick message in the chat so that we can we can know that oh, at least some of you have been to Hong Kong. And um, this is actually a, a night view from the Victoria Harbor. And Hong Kong, it's, it's really a place where most of the people around the world know us as, you know, this is a very big metro metropolitan city. And um, this is really a city of opportunities. So uh, what makes Hong Kong stands out in among uh, different Asian cities? Our, we always proud ourselves as the heart of Asia, which um, from here you can actually see. Um, we have the, if not the biggest, I think one of the biggest world, uh, air hub among different Asian cities. So in four hours, basically from Hong Kong, we have a lot of connecting flights to all parts of the world. I think in most po most popular ports of destinations in the Middle East, we are well covered. And from Middle East, you, it only takes around an eight to nine hours uh, direct flight to fly to Hong Kong. And in we always think that you know in around five hours of uh, flight traffic we uh, from Hong Kong as a center it covers around five uh, around half of the world's populations already so this is a, a, a very much a center of what's actually happening uh, in a lot of the economic growth in the, especially in the recent years and then for students from Middle East I think most Port, we have a direct flight, so um, it is not really not that far away. You know, I'm not so sure if some of you might be considering uh, certain as destinations in the US, um, in the UK, but um, flying to Hong Kong from uh, from uh, your port of destinations is probably around this takes about the same time, if not less, compared to the US. Um, in Hong Kong, uh, one of the things that a lot of people in the past doesn't know uh, that well, it's the quality education, which is in English. Um, I'm sure that some of you um, from the chat, I think uh, it's uh, already know that Hong Kong, you know, you know, already know a little bit of uh, what Hong Kong is about. But um, Hong Kong is actually a place where most of the universities, I think the, all, at least all the universities that is presenting uh, to you today and in the other sessions, we teach in English. And uh, if you just take a look at the ranking table, we are 
we are very high up in the ranking tables. So in terms of the quality of the education that we offer, um, it's it's a, a very high. I think uh, later on when we go into the specific universities, each of us will show you a little bit of reasons why uh, the quality of education is it's really top notch if you consider uh, that. Career opportunities. I think uh, career opportunities is, is a, a, a one of the hot, hottest I think uh, topic among people when actually choosing a study destinations because you know when you choose a place to study overseas, you always look beyond that four years or or number of years of initial studies. You might want to get a, a bachelor degree. You might want to get a master degree. You might want to look beyond that. Um, Hong Kong is special because we welcome uh, people from all over the world to come to Hong Kong, not only to study, but also to actually write on the, the potential, because we want to, the, re, the, the very first reasons why Hong Kong universities want to open up our universities to to the rest of the world is really for the people. And we want you to stay here in Hong Kong after you graduate as well. So the Hong Kong government actually have a, a visa policy that enables all graduates, no matter which discipline or no matter which uh, universities you're in, in Hong Kong, uh, once you graduate, you get one year free uh, visa free uh, to stay in Hong Kong to actually find a job. And uh, any companies, getting a, a, a visa for international students is not very difficult. So that uh, you might actually wish to consider because um, uh, if you want to try it out in, in other cities, Hong Kong is definitely one of the multi multinational cities. And after you, you graduate from your universities, uh, if you further, uh, let's say you come here for a four year undergraduate degrees. And after four years, if you stay on for an additional three years, you will have, a, uh, you can actually apply for the Hong Kong permanent residence. And this is uh, quite a normal route for many of our international students. And um, later on, we can also touch a little bit about um, why I think uh, it, some of the universities will also tell you a little bit about uh, how graduates from these universities are going to find job in Hong Kong. And, and right now in Hong Kong, even at the time of COVID-19, um, we our unemployment rate is not too much hampered. I think uh, recently we have uh, our universities, I think uh, other universities can share out later, has done some research for last year's, even last year's graduates are able to actually find, most of our graduates actually are able to find a job uh, before they graduate. So, so you might want to think along that line if you are planning further ahead uh, after your graduation. Tuition fees, um, I think the, um, the next two slides, so we're gonna talk about tuition fees in comparison with other destinations. Um, this is a very general uh, estimate because it spans across different universities in Hong Kong. So generally the tuition fee spans from around 18,000 US dollar to 22,000. You might think that um, this is not, not a very cheap place. Of course, you know, Hong Kong is one of the most expensive cities in the world. I think apart from tuition fees uh, itself, which uh, uh, it's already partially subsidized, I would say, by the Hong Kong government. Um, other aspects like on campus ac accommodations and also living expenses is, is actually not that expensive compared to to what you might think. So uh, all in all, for one year of study in Hong Kong, uh, you might be thinking about around 25 to 30,000 US dollar per year. Um, that is not real. That has not been uh, uh, considered uh, for any type of scholarships. Uh, scholarships will come in later on to actually bring that fees uh, much down, much lower. And then next, um, so this is a quick comparison uh, for the numbers on this particular slide. You can actually get the same information on, from the QS website. We actually pulled out uh, some sample costs. If you are considering USA, UK, Australia, and Hong Kong, I believe most of those students who are considering overseas education will probably think about the first three destinations. Um, just look at the average cost of study and live uh, and living. Uh, if you add in the cost of the undergraduate studies and also cost of living together, uh, if we compare to USA, UK, uh, Hong Kong's cost, it's easily around half or at least 40% cheaper than 
those other two places, if you compare to Australia, we are at least around 30% cheaper. Um, again, this is not, uh, this has not taken into considerations of any part of scholarships that you might get coming to Hong Kong. And um, scholarship applications, um, definitely it will be an, a plus, I think for, from the chat, I've already seen some students are uh, asking about the opportunities of scholarships. Each and different, uh, each and every university uh, will offer our own scholarships in a very quite generous way. I have been in in education sector in Hong Kong for uh, many many years, and uh, from what I see and from what others will tell you today, uh, most of the universities have. Uh, pretty generous scholarships that are waiting for the best students to actually come uh, to snatch it up. And apart from that, there are actually some government initiated scholarships. Um, in the past few years, we have started the scholarships called the Belt and Road Scholarship, which uh, it's uh, started by the Hong Kong government, funded by the Hong Kong government, and that scholarship is actually expanding. And this year, uh, all of our, the universities in Hong Kong are recommending students uh, into these particular schemes. And if you are uh, from uh, students from the Middle East, uh, quite likely that you will, you might be able to be nominated into this particular uh, bed and roll scholarships if your academic results are good. And um, on this particular scholarship, uh, uh, this year for the arrangement, it's uh, that students will actually get the tuition fee waived for the full four years. So if you are able to actually get a government, uh, home government scholarships, uh, then you will not, you will just have to take care of your own living expenses in Hong Kong to be here in Hong Kong for the full four years. So that's uh, pretty much about Hong Kong. Um, what? I think uh, the presenters uh, will next next up will actually give you an overview of each universities, and then after that, if you have some uh, questions about Hong Kong, if you have some particular questions about each particular universities, you can uh, leave your questions in Q and A, and then I think all of us will be more than happy to take any questions later on after the whole presentations. Uh, especially if you have any questions about Hong Kong, um, then uh, other presenters today who are here also can also uh, supplement that and then we will try to answer your queries. So uh, moving on to Baptist universities, um, the, the universities that uh, I am actually representing. So Hong Kong Baptist universities by name itself, uh, you know, you might first think that we are a uh, 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 Christian, university but uh, we have actually a christian heritage but uh we are actually a government funded universities and uh, by that uh, you do not have to have any kind of religions we welcome any any kind of religions to actually join us in fact we do also have a lot of muslim students we have a lot of um, of different religious uh, students joining us every year so so um we are uh 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 government funded and then we do not actually take uh religion as part of the selection criteria but um we do actually have our own selective criteria which uh in this few years that we have actually set up half we want our students to be creative to be innovative to be global and to be caring this is a, a theme that we have been using in selecting our students um later on i will quickly explain why so the, for the universities uh, we are founded in 1956. We are one of the uh, uh, oldest universities in Hong Kong, and uh, we are located right in the city center. So for those of you who on the chat, uh, you might have been to Hong Kong, then uh, our university is, is right here in the city center. So uh, if you want to travel from, uh, we are in Kowloon Tong, and from that, if you want to go to any place in, in Hong Kong, you will take usually less than one hour in tr public transport. We teach in English, and uh, uh, a quick check, uh, we are, our university is actually, uh, it's not a very big university, we have about 10,000 students. Uh, in And for 10,000 students, uh, that might be a big university it's in the Middle East, but in Hong Kong, that's actually considered medium size. Uh, but we are proud to have the highest uh, student faculty ratio. Uh, so uh, at around 15 to 1, I think uh, the recent uh, updates is that we are right now moving towards 14 to 1. So 14 to 1 faculty students ratio. And we proud ourselves as a liberal arts university delivering academic excellence as well as innovations and uh, research and social progress. 
just now I actually touched on four criteria of the of the universities. Basically, this is the DNA that we want to imbue in our students. Um, we want our students to be uh, in the four four area, which first of all is actually creativity. So to to say it's about uh, creativity, we are a liberal art. We we want to, we offer a lot of liberal arts subjects, and uh, we are quite a unique universities in a lot of sense for those of you who are thinking about uh creative subjects for example we have uh visual arts we have music we have film we have acting um and we have sports management so these are some of the creative domains that are offered at our universities but for students who wants to do tra traditional subjects like um uh, if you are still thinking about business, you will think about science, about computer engineering, um, then uh, we we are also encouraging our students to actually uh, take part in some of the courses in the creative domains so that you will have an exposure into the creativity that we want and each and every single student to be having. And then, um, of course, we are also pushing a lot of different projects, and uh, one of it is actually Dream Big project that we wish uh, to using using some scholarships to. Ho we hope that students actually uh, do some creative work during their uh, four years of undergraduate studies. And be innovation. Innovation is is actually a big thing, and uh, apart from the research achievements that we uh, we strive as universities, we are also. Uh, I think right now we are the only universities in Hong Kong that offer entrepreneurship as a major for our business students. So our business students actually, you can choose to to be an entrepreneur, which uh, along the way of the four years, you will have a lot of support in terms of finding fundings and seedings in Hong Kong. As you know, that Hong Kong is also a, a great, great place for startups, especially if in these few years, we are quite famous for a lot of fintech startups uh, in the regions, not, not not only in the regions, I think uh, some of our fintech startups actually goes up to all the way to uh, reaching the world. So uh, innovation is also one of the key key area that we want to push our students to be in to be involved in in the four years of their studies, and um, global. I think uh, global. It's uh, I would say this is not an exquisite uh, theme of Hong Kong Baptist Universities. I think this theme, uh, in fact, uh, to be honest, I think it's quite uh, significant around all the other universities in Hong Kong because Hong Kong is, is by itself is a very global city. So uh, we also wanted to push our students uh, for a global experience and uh, exposure. Um, in fact, for most of the students studying in Hong Kong Baptist universities, we push our students to exchange overseas. So uh, once you come to Hong Kong, you spend four years in um, already a, a very international hub, but we want you to actually go one step further to go to try out to uh, go on to another universities, uh, be it in Europe, be it in US, um, to have one, a semester exchange at least, to actually experience some other culture. And then if one semester is not enough for you, um, our universities also provide opportunities for a lot of double degrees. So uh, for example, we you can also choose uh, two plus two degree to go to Simon Fraser in the Canada, um, uh, so to spend two years in Canada and two years in Hong Kong, we also have other uh, uh, collaborations with some in Europe and some with in US and also with some in uh, Australia as well. So those are the some of the options that you can, if you're interested, you can actually go to the handout sessions to download our prospectus that will actually give you more information about on that. And caring, last but not least, I think uh, one of the uh, biggest theme I would say that uh, our university is trying to do is to be part of the global uh, community, to, to be part of the Hong Kong community. I think this is, uh, as our name goes, although we are not a, a Christian university, uh, we do actually have this uh, Christian heritage and then we want to care for each and every single student that apply to us. So uh, in all in all, I think if you apply to our universities one of the things that i can actually personally promise you is we treat each and every single application as a person is you're not a grade you're not an uh, a paper you're not a record you're not an application number you are a person that we want to understand and then we will consider each and every single aspect that your strength is into the application so we work on the 
kind of like a one-on-one -on -one with our applicants. So uh, each and every applicant will be assigned an admissions manager to work with you. What kind of things that you might uh, more, will be actually more suitable for you, and what are the options that you can have to, given your your academic background. So um, we also have a colorful residential life. I think that's actually uh, same things for for every universities around the world. Uh, you come here. I think the biggest part of studying for a full four years degree is playing. I would say <laughs> this is actually my my own experience as well. I think the life, the university's life, the social life in the universities is irreplaceable. So so do make sure that you enjoy that during your university's life. Um, and uh, there's a lot of student organizations who do different things on your or on your own and to sport to do sports, social affairs, special interests. I think those are a very important part of life at HKBU and also a uh, very important part of life at an undergraduate studies. So I'll just keep to uh, probably the last thing, um, two, two, two more slides, I think, uh, my time. For Hong Kong Baptist Universities, we are offering Faculty of Arts, School of Chinese Medicine, um, Science, Visual Arts, Business, Communications, and Social Science. We are very popular in Hong Kong for our communication program. Uh, we are also very popular for Chinese medicine, but for that, uh, if you're interested in Chinese medicine, you have to know Chinese before you actually come. Um, and for the others, uh, programs. I think uh, international students usually chooses uh, Hong Kong. Uh, a lot of our application goes to our Faculty of Science and also our business. So a full list of our programs will be actually available in the QR code there. So, and also available in the prospectus. So uh, if you're still catching uh, an application uh, for this coming cohort, uh, which you will enter the universities in September this year, um, then take your uh, this is actually the time for you to actually launch, launch an application. So our extended uh, round of applications actually ends in May. And uh, if you are looking for next year, then uh, you will, uh, the best chance of getting landing any scholarships will be in our early round admissions, which is starts from September. So from September, if you are seriously looking for scholarships, I, my, uh, my uh, advice will, will be to actually sign an application in September. So this is uh, our contact. So anytime, i uh, also leave my personal contact in the, chat later on so if you have any questions you can you can actually uh uh send it to us so we will uh answer you and in personal if you have any question and answer questions after this particular presentations you can still look for me anytime my name is frank and then uh without further ado i will pass on to the next presenter uh, which will be the city university of hong kong hello Hello, this is Crystal from City University of Hong Kong. I hope you can all hear me. Uh, if you have any problem while I, in, in terms of the microphone, um, just give me a shout on the, in the chat box. So hi, my name is Crystal. I'm from City University of Hong Kong. Uh, it's great to see you all here. So today um, I'm giving you a brief uh, introductions about City Universities. Uh, if you want to find out a little bit more information about City U, um, if you go to the handout part, uh, we have full brochures there. You'll be able to find out um, mostly detailed information written in the brochures. Um, so let's just start. Um, so um, here it's just showing you some pictures about the background of City U. Um, to show you all this extraordinary building at the back. Um, so these are the main buildings and the campus on the right hand side here um, it shows you the hotel residence so if you come to come to CDU this is where you'll be staying um, so um, why about CDU so um, CDU was founded in 1984 uh, we used to be polytechnic universities and in 1994 uh, we become um, Hong Kong government accredited universities. Um, so we become a full universities um, in, in 1994. Um, so now currently um, CDU, um, we have roughly about 20,000 students, okay, um, 12,000 of them are undergraduates and 8,000 are postgraduate students, roughly 8,000 um, more or less. Um, so you can see, um, you know, we are, we are quite a reasonable size universities. Uh, in terms of international students, out of 20,000, 7,000, just, uh, just over 7,000 of them are um, international students. So um, it shows you the diversity of the universities. 
So here, because we have so many, because we are government funded, um, because we have so many international students, this is why um, English is uh, English is, is the main medium on instructions. Um, the slides. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So um, okay. Let's go to the next page. Um, I'm not going to go into too much details about the um, jobs because I think Frank um, just covered in his slides. But um, basically, yes, we have a low employment rate. And in Hong Kong, we have over 9,000 multinational company based in Hong Kong. So finding a job um, is not difficult in Hong Kong. Um, here, just showing you the possibility if you're interested in going to China um, and, and worked on things, worked on industry like uh, engineering, business, or creative arts. This will be some kind of. It will be a nice place to go to. Um, so about CDU, um, as I mentioned earlier, with the diversity of the universities, you know, we are uh, last year's in 2020 were voted um, the most un international university across the world. So not just Hong Kong, not just Asia, but across the world, we are competing with all the big names university, Ivy League universities, and we become number one. And in terms of the ranking, um, as you can see, despite we're a very young university um, compared to some, um, you can see um, over the years, um, you can see the ranking has gone up every year. Last year's um, in 2020, uh, we were 52. We we're very pleased, and in the, or this year's, and we we actually um, in um, number 48 in the QS ranking. So, um, so you show um, you know how diverse we are. Uh, we show how hard our students, our teachers, our lecturers have worked over the years. So, um, CDU, how it's formed. Um, CDU, it's we formed based on four colleges here, yeah, these four colleges and five schools. Um, obviously, we're a comprehensive university, so the program that runs, you can see, is pretty much, um, you can see by the name of it, you know what we offered. Um, I would say like business with is probably one of the most popular program, um, especially for the Middle East students as well. Business, engineering, these two subjects, and, and, and and science, of course, um, these three will be probably the very popular subjects uh, among um, the Middle East students. Uh, but another one which is very popular um, and also very one of our most competitive program is our veterinary program. Um, we are the only university in Hong Kong right now offering offering uh, med, uh, veterinary medicine. So if you're interested in that kind of subject, um, then you know City will be a nice place to go to. Um, but in terms of the um, popularity these three I would say um, they are most popular not only because um, the program we offered but also the ranking as well so for example um, for, for the business you know we ranked um, number one um, uh, according to Asia and Pacific um, according to the TDU business school um, and as for engineering um, our engineering departments also ranked number 16 according to the US news worldwide and uh, computer science again we ranked um, number 13 in the US news world worldwide. So um, this just shows you like the competitiveness among um, all the colleges in school. Um, okay. Um, again, because um, the number of the the number of um, international students at the university, we are also very diverse in, amongst the faculties. Okay, but I'm not going to go into too much details. Um, but if you go to our school website, you can see many pictures of our non-local lecturers there okay so um some just want to show you some of the programs um again this is one of our pride and joy um i think um the program with columbia universities um this is a joint degree program that will offer you the opportunities to come and study in city U for two years and in your third and fourth year you go to columbia universities and um once you've completed the program, you'll be able to receive two degrees. So that's why we call it a dual degree uh, or joint degree, bachelor degree program. And these are the programs that you will be able to study um, at Columbia Universities. Uh, for those of you who might not know about Columbia University, it's one of the Ivy League universities in the US, uh, ranking very high, prominent universities. Um, so it's an honor that to be able to be, to be able to do a joint program with them. So these are some programs you can go onto our website um, and find a little bit more about the program or the details about the, the course. So um, beside Columbia, okay, um, this year's, you know, we have signed up to a um, couple of two new programs, but on the left-hand side, um, you know, if you're in interested in 
um, creative arts, um, you'll be able to do a double degree with Lausanne Universities. Um, if you like, um, if you want to go to uh, Taiwan, um, you can also go. You can go to the National University of um, National in, Taiwan University. I can never say this name. Don't know why. Um, and um, the two new programs that we have recently um, signed up this year. I'm um, very proud to say. You know, not only we expanded in US or in Europe. Now we have put. Uh, we have. We are working with university um, in the UK. <coughs> Excuse me. So. Um, we have um, Edinburgh University and University of Manchester here. So um, another thing we want to mention is about the internship opportunities that we offer in some of the programs. Uh, I'm not going to go into too much details um, in internship. I think we'll, we'll answer it in a big group. Okay. Um, but this is just showing you that, you know, students after they graduated from Sydney, what they normally do. So over seventy percent of them, they will go on to do. Um, they will graduate and enter to some of these big names, and some of these companies are actually based in Hong Kong. Um, we have just under twenty percent of them. They will actually go to. Um, they will go to do their postgraduate program, and um, of course, they go and go to something else. Okay. Um, <coughs> again, I'm not going to go into too much details about the exchange. Um, I think because we don't have a lot of time, but um, just want to show you about the pictures about our Horder residents, um, students who are currently, well, who are students, international students coming to study at CDU, you will be able to um, stay in the Horder resident for the first two years, um, and third and fourth year you is based on first come first serve basis, but most of them you can probably get a Horder resident. Um, I think most of you want to know is about the. Um, the fees and the scholarship opportunities. Um, here, just showing you the program, we offer two types of program. One is called the first year entry, which means you started in the first years. Um, second one, we call it the advanced standing, uh, which means that you start with CD, you start, you come to CDU and you'll be entering from the second years and onwards. Okay. So here, um, showing you the, the admission requirements. Um, so, um, I'm not going to go into too much details in that. You can like take a snapshot of the program, or if not, I'll leave you my contact data, and you can um, you know, we can chat. I'll give you a one-on-one -on -one consultation um, later on. Okay. Um, for all our program, you besides the minimum entry requirement, you are also what you also need to provide um, your English uh, proficiency uh, evidence. So um, normally we take obviously the straightforward would be at the IELTS or the um, IB um, and the TOEFL. So um, IELTS it needs to be six point five and above um, in the overall score or seventy nine um, in TOEFL. Um, here showing you about the fees, I think you probably need to know. So the tuition fee at CDU is 18000 per year. Um, the cost of living is roughly about 4600 um, 4, um, And if you stay uh, on campus, um, the hotter resident fees will be just under 2000 US. Uh, if you stay outside, a little bit more expensive. So all in all, um, the, the accommodation fee, if you stay on campus, will be just under 25000 and out, outside the campus will be just under thirty. So here, I think scholarship, this is the part you probably want to know the most. Um, so we offer generous um, scholarship at the universities. Um, so we offer three kinds of, these are called the merit-based scholarship. Um, your, your application, your scholarship will be given to you based on your um, high school final year results. Um, so basically, the better you do, the more you will get. Um, so we give you a half scholarship. Um, so they will cover half your tuition fee, full scholarship that will cover all your tuition. And lastly, if you receive the top scholarship, you know, um, then you, you get the 23,000 that will cover your tuition fee, your cost of li uh, well, the, the co living, living expenses and the accommodation fee. And hopefully there'll be a little bit of money on the side. Um, so we, because we want you to concentrate on your study. So um, the scholarship we get, we not only give it to you for one year, you will get it every year if you be able to maintain the score you have. So um, you need to maintain a certain level of your CGPA scores every year, and then you'll be able to receive the scholarship in the following year. So once you receive the scholarship, this is the amount you'll be receiving for the rest of your study while you're CDU, two, three years or four years. Um, here, this is the, um, again, this is 
some of the scholarship we offer, um, diversity grant, I um, think that probably applies to some of you. Um, if you are um, non, this is actually helping students who want to increase the diversity. So students holding certain passport holders, um, including students from the UAE uh, or the Middle East, uh, most of you will be able to receive a diversity grant, which is um, 38.50 US per year. So you can actually combine your scholarship and this, uh, you know, that's pretty generous you know, overall. Um, so um, these are the post entrance scholarship. Uh, again, I'm not going to go into too much details, um, but if you need more, if or, or if you want more information, you're most welcome to ask me later on. Um, so um, again, um, this is just the um, application deadline. If you are thinking to apply next year, you can see the date is actually current year or last year. Uh, we're taking application starting from this September, but if you're interested in applying now, we're still taking application. You can apply at any time you wish. Um, and these are just some of the requirements that or the documents that you need to provide, which is also in the brochures. Um, and lastly, here at the contact um, of, the, of, our, of our website, uh, I'll leave my contact on the right hand side here. If you have any questions later on, you're most welcome to, um, to send me an email. So, um, sorry, sorry, and maybe I'm a little bit overrun, but um, I'll pass the stage to you. Thank you so much. You're fine, Crystal. So this is Surian, and I'm representing the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. So I will keep my presentation very, very short because I will leave like to leave some time for Ling Nam Yu, which comes after me. So I've been just showing a campus picture of HKUST because we are very proud of our very beautiful seaside campus, the only seaside campus in Hong Kong, I'm not sure in Asia as well. Many students choose to come because of our spectacular sea view. Let me just go back there. So this first row of buildings are student residential halls. Every morning when they push open the window, they will have these spectacular sea view in front of them. And this is just an other angle of our webs of our campus tab. So this is our, again, Oceanside football field. HKUST is very, very young. We were established in 1991, celebrating our 30th anniversary this year. And among all the world's young universities, we are number one in the whole world. And uh, we have been number one young university since 2018 for three consecutive of years already. If including everyone, we are 27th in the whole world according to QS World University rankings. So academically, very, very strong there. CU has been talking about internationalization and HKUST is also a very international campus. We are chosen as the third most international university according to Times Higher Education back in 2019. A very diverse and international community we have. But that's not the only ranking that we're proud. This is the ranking we're most proud of. We are chosen, um, according to an agency in Europe, they interview headhunters, recruiters, human resources personnel every year, 3,000 of them from 20 different countries and asking them a question. Graduates from which university are considered more employable and they come up with this ranking. Our graduates, HKUSC graduates, after four years at HKUSC, they become highly sought after globally. They are number 10 most employable in the whole world and as employable as those Ivy League graduates. So graduating HKUST, chances are you don't have to worry not finding a job. It's very likely you will have more than just one job offer there. I mentioned we are academically very strong because all our faculties are PhD holders and 100% of them have PhD from world's top universities. In terms of program provisions and curriculum design, we are very innovative and forward looking. We are we have a number of first in Asia or even first in the whole world. We are the first in Asia to provide massive online open courses, just like Coursera and edX over a decade ago. We're again the first one in Asia to provide undergraduate research opportunities program for UG students to do academic or scientific research or start up their own research projects. We are probably, the, again, the first one in Asia to launch a program that allows students to design their own major. Just like the picture showing there, um, his name is Thomas and he graduated from a program called Bi Bachelor of Science in Bionics designed by himself in 2018. So we are very avant-garde in program provisions there. And we have a number of cross-disciplinary programs. 
another world's number one. We are the first one to partner with other university to provide a triple degree or joint university program. We collaborate with University of Southern California in the US and University of Bacani in Milan, Italy to launch the World Bachelor of Business. Very, very innovative there. And cross-disciplinary joint school program, interdisciplinary program, or joint university program. You name it, we have it, and we do see the needs. And we didn't stop there. We are launching new program framework. It's called a major with an extended major in artificial intelligence. So in addition to your first major, you have the option of doing an extended major in AI. For 2021, the framework applies to science A applicants that will be physics and mathematics and all engineering related programs. Our engineering school has 16 different majors and you have the option of doing one of them with an extended major in AI. So other than the academics, of course, we do have internships, exchange programs, extracurriculars, and of course, experiential learning opportunities robotics and case competitions. If you don't know what your true interests are, come here, find your interests using all our opportunities. If you already know what your passion is, come here, we'll support you to achieve what you wish to achieve there. So now comes to the factual and hard facts part. We are a research university. We are not a comprehensive university. We only have four schools. We don't have law, we don't have medicine, we don't have arts. But in the four areas, science, engineering, business and management, humanities and social science were very, very good. Just to mention our EMBA program provided by our business school has been eight times as world's number one in the past decade. So while we are called science and technology, our business school is very strong as well. Our curriculum is very flexible. You don't even whichever program or whichever school you're admitted to the first year you will be doing foundation and school foundation and common core courses and just to explore different programs offered by our different schools and at the end of the first year you decide on your major you don't have to start your major until the second or even the third year and you have a lot of flexibility in doing one major or two major or even triple major or cross-disciplinary program or joint degree program, joint university program there, very flexible. Just like CTU, while our main round deadline already closed, already passed, we're still accepting application and offers will be issued on rolling basis. So you can, we're still accepting application for 2021, no worries. We accept a wide variety of qualifications. This is some of them. You can go to our website and check out the details there. We use English to teach, so there's an English language requirements. I'm not going to detail. Some of the programs will require interview. On many of the students got admitted without an interview. So fees and scholarships, just pretty much all universities here have a similar uh, tuition fee every year. It's about 18,000 US for a year at HKUST. I'm not showing that. And our scholarship, we do have standard scholarship scheme for IB students, for GCA level students, and Olympian medals. If you have ever joined any Olympic competitions and had a medal, there's a standard scheme there. So for admissions um, scholarship, you don't have to apply. You'll be reviewed automatically. So, and you will know whether you have a scholarship when you receive the admission offer there. There are non academic scholarships scholarship which does require application okay and for 2021 we have a scholarship for particularly for egyptian students go to our website and you will check out the detail and these are full scholarship as well so this is our website go there and check out the details there now i'll pass the time oh and this is our well we are on all social media platform so that's HKUST. I'll pause the time to Ling now. Thank you. Thank you very much. This is Gavin from Lingnan University. You can see our beautiful campus from the picture here. We are the Liberal Arts University in Hong Kong. And we were established in Guangzhou in China in 1888. And we were established in Hong Kong in 1967. And we are one of the eight government-funded universities in Hong Kong. 
and we are named one of the 10 top 10 liberal arts colleges in Asia by Forbes. And by the Times Higher Education ranking, we earned the second worldwide for quality education. And we are also ranked by QS Asia, the top 100 Asian universities. Uh, we offer uh, liberal arts education, so we have a small number of students of the intake around 650 per year. So um, some of you may not uh, really know about liberal arts education. It is indeed uh, long ago established in the US and uh, we look after the students not only in the professional academic uh, profession but also the transformative soft skills. So um, Okay, so um, we are student oriented and for liberal arts education, um, there is a survey we have done about that is uh, when employers see that uh, the soft skills, the critical thinking and the communication skills are very important. They are more important than what major the undergraduates uh, graduated from. So uh, a highlight five key elements of our liberal arts education. The first one is about our curriculum, which is a very wide and broad based. So students are free to choose uh, many of the subjects they like and form uh, different mi minors they like to take during their undergraduate studies. And also we have a small student population. So each of our teacher are uh, taking care of around 13 to 14 students so that uh, they have a lot of opportunities for interactions. And we offer uh, professors as academic advisors for our students so that um, every student, no matter they are local or international, they can be well taken care of. And we provide a full residential campus in our campus. So that means all undergraduate students, if they want to, they can stay in our campus, which is not only safe, uh, it is also um, a good opportunity for our students to get engaged in different learning opportunities because there are a lot of cultural sports and um, liberal arts education activities in the hostel. And you can take a glance of uh, the buildings and the rooms and activities of our student hostel. There are 10 blocks of buildings in our campus. And we also look after the community service of our students because uh, it is not only the traditional volunteer service of our students, but they also participate in different kinds of uh, society projects using their professional knowledge. And we also are uh, concerned about our students' entrepreneurial initiative. So there are a lot of opportunities for our students to develop um, their aspect in uh, the entrepreneurial uh, innovation. And uh, in our liberal arts education, the global learning opportunity is also very important. That include internship opportunities, both in Hong Kong, or outside Hong Kong in mainland China or internationally. And there are also service learning programs uh, in the world. And our students can also participate in international exchanges. Uh, we have more than 250 partner institutions in the world and more than 80% of our undergraduates participate in our student exchanges. Uh, and our university provide the free etiquettes for each of our students on exchange and there are scholarships and other forms of financial assistance to support them to go abroad. And we were receiving around 400 income exchange students before the pandemic, so we are having a true uh, international campus. And on this slide, you can uh, take a glance of um, what country our partners are located in. There are most of the countries that our students are interested in studying at. And these are the lovely pictures from our students who went studying abroad. And here is the list of the programs that we offer in the undergraduate level. We have uh, three faculties, 
in the liberal arts education of Lingnan University. Uh, we have the Faculty of Arts, which is also known as Humanities. You can see Chinese, English, uh, Cultural Studies, etc. We have the Business Faculty, including the popular and majority of the business programs. And we also have the Social Sciences Faculty offering Economics, Political Science, Sociology and Psychology. And you can see the uh, right column, we call it interdisciplinary. This is a newly established uh, program since 2019 to cope with the needs of the society worldwide. Uh, the name of the program is Global Liberal Arts. And here we have a slide to a little bit talking about more about this flagship program. This is to allow our students to adjust their studying interest and have an in-depth uh, knowledge in our um, studying disciplines, including the global business and entrepreneurship, art, science, technology, and society, greater China, or globalization. And a particular unique uh, point of this program is that each student in this program will be uh, allocated two times to study abroad. And the program fee for studying abroad and of course the round trip airfare will be covered by the university. So it is a very interesting program for the students who do not only want to study in Hong Kong but also want to get opportunity to study abroad in two more continents. So uh, our students in this program, uh, they are going to go abroad in the coming year because we are having the first cohort going abroad. So many of them are going to the UK, like uh, the London School of Economics and Political Science, and some of them going to Canada, like to University of British Columbia. So this is the choice of our students. And um, for employment, uh, our students, uh, the local students, can uh, follow the immigration arrangement for the local undergraduate graduates. That they can have a 12 month stay after graduation. Uh, even without securing the employment offer. And uh, for our university, the uh, graduate survey before, that is the um, overall salary is uh, over 2,000 US dollars per month. And um, the percentage of getting a full-time job or full-time studies are over 94%. And the tuition fee is around US 18,000 per year. And for the hostel fee is uh, ranging from around 1,200 to 1,700 per year. And uh, the fee of studying in uh, Hong Kong is relatively low. And uh, many students are asking about the scholarships. So uh, I will briefly talk about that as well. Uh, each student applying for Nainan University programs will be automatically be considering for the admission scholarships. So you do not need to apply for the scholarships separately. And we offer uh, generous and attractive scholarships for our local students up to full scholarship, depending on the English language proficiency, the academic background, the performance at the uh, uh, admission interviews, uh, if the candidates are selected, and other criteria that uh, the interview panel sees suitable. And we accept a wide range of um, international curriculum like IB, SAT, etc. So the information are listed on our website. And all the courses are taught in English except the Chinese language and translation courses. So we also need your English language proficiency proof that are shown here. And if uh, students are affected by COVID-19 so that they cannot participate in the normal English language proficiency test, there are also special arrangements that uh, you can check with us individually. And our main round uh, application is now open until 17th of May, so you can still apply on our system. And here you can see the information of our contact and you can uh, take a QR code on the screen to receive more information from us. So um, I will leave the time now for the Q&A because uh, many of you may be having questions to all four of us. Thank you very much.
calling Carla. Carla, are you there? Thank you very much all uh, for your presentations. They were super interesting and the institutions, they look amazing. So um, I know that some of you have been answering on the Q&A, which is awesome, but I will just read out loud for, for you all the most general questions that I found there. So the first one will be, do you offer any scholarships? If I may, I will go first. I think all of us really mentioned in our individual presentations the scholarships that we offer. And uh, I would just say that a mission scholarship for all of us are merit based mostly. And for non academic ones, it will require application. So you have to check out the details on the non academic ones. For academic ones, um, for HKUST, you don't have to apply separately. If you apply for admission to HKUST, you will be considered automatically for admission scholarships. There's standard scheme for IB and GC level, but for the others, case by case, you will receive the scholarship offer together with the admission offer. That's HKUST. Awesome. Okay, Thank so you very much. Uh, I'll, I'll go next. I think um, just now I have answered a couple of those questions in the uh, in the Q and A as well. Um, Soren already covered most of it. I think uh, all of us will uh, right here presenting today are offering scholarships all the way to full scholarships, um, and most of it is actually uh, all based on merits. I think just now that some teachers asking for links. I think uh, uh, most of the information is on already on our website, but uh, for the sake of today. Uh, uh, if you just go to the handouts, uh, we have actually put up all the prospectus. And in every prospectus that we have, we have quite detailed uh, scholarship information listed out in the prospectus. So, so a very quick first step for you if you want to, if you miss any part of the presentation today, just go on to the handouts and uh, download pr the prospectus. You should be able to find the scholarship information right there. Excellent. Thank you very much. So uh, for Linnan University, I have already introduced uh, about our scholarship offers and uh, applications during my presentation. Basically, you just need to submit your application for our undergraduate programs. So our interview panel and the professors for the respective academic programs will screen through carefully your application and uh, arrange the initial interview for the certificate candidates and then you will be notified of the scholarship offer result uh, afterwards so uh, basically everything will be done automatically so uh, the most you can get is the full scholarship that uh, covers all the tuition fee and also gives you a stipend uh, and also the full hostel fee in Nainan University and we also have the half uh scholarship which is everything is half without the stipend and also we have the fixed amount scholarship that is a fixed and uh, one off the full and half scholarship will be renewable if uh, in the second third and fourth year your uh, academic achievement maintains a good standard awesome thank you very much Does anyone else want to add anything there? Um, I think yeah. I think uh, there's also another very common so, question. Uh, sorry, sorry, Carla. Just to ask, I think uh, no, for, okay. for the sake of everybody, uh, there are actually some students looking for master degree, uh, and then asking in particular, uh, yes. do, uh because uh, the panel today, uh, we are all in charge of undergraduate studies. In, in Hong Kong, it's, it's quite <laughs> unique as in our structure that, that uh, we are, that because all the undergraduate degrees are actually uh, very greatly funded by the Hong Kong government. So the master degree is another team, but uh, for any information, if you want looking for master degree scholarships, there are a couple of universities that offer in some programs that you can actually just go to our website to take a look. And then, but then uh, if you're looking for a PhD, there are 
uh, fellowship schemes in most of the universities that offer. So you also the first point of contact or the first point of information, if you're looking for those will be our university website. You should be able to look for those information. We do have scholarships uh, for PhD students if you are strong uh, by academic merit. Excellent. Thank you very, very much. Does anyone want to add anything to the postgraduate programs? All good? Excellent. Okay. Um, this question is actually for me. Will, will you share this webinar later? Yes. We are recording it and we will upload it later today to our YouTube channel, The Student World. So you can go there and check it again um, to clarify any doubts that you may may have. Um, the next question is, what are the terms and conditions of admission? If I may, I will go first, maybe. <laughs> um, depends on the qualification. I think all of us accept a wide variety of qualifications, all the common, more and more common ones, GCA level, IB, SAT, AP, and national examinations, we do accept that. So just again, check out on brochure, go to our website, check out the particular requirements for each national examinations. So it's different. And um, we may have subject specific requirements for different schools. For example, if you're taking science, of course, we'll expect your examination subjects will include science subjects. And we do all use English as the teaching medium. So you are all required to fulfill the English proficiency part. So I'm speaking in general of everybody here. And um, if I'm missing anything, please feel free to add. Um, I think to, to Zorian's point, um, for all the, all the uh, universities, um, I'll just quickly tell you what documents you need to provide when you submit when you when you apply with us um, generally speaking i think you need to submit the transcript your proficiency english exam results um, and you probably have predicted grades uh, personal statement you know these kind of the few major documents that you need to send to us um, as zorian was saying earlier it depends which subject you apply the requirement will be slightly different depending on the subjects um, and all the application will be reviewed uh, on an individual basis anyway but when you submit, these are the documents that you should um, submit to us. Um, but for the details, I think I'll suggest you to go to the handouts there. Um, I think all the details are actually listed on there. Okay. So for Ning Nang Perfect. University, Thank you very much. I have uh, just uh, posted uh, at the chat box that uh, the admission requirements there. So basically, as Orian has introduced, we uh, res uh, 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 accept as wide range or as possible the international qualifications so you can check out there and if you have any questions just email them to me um, i'm happy to answer your questions and of course about our postgraduate programs if you have any questions you can still email to me and i will direct your message to the right person and get back to you that will be more convenient to you all i believe excellent thank you very much Anyone wants to add anything else? Awesome. Okay, so the next question is, do the international students, can get um, can they get study, study permits while studying? No, work permits while studying, sorry. No, I think with the visas, I think this is, again, I think I can answer for everybody. Um, when students come and study, they are coming entering Hong Kong using the student visas. So they're not supposed to work. The working regulations in Hong Kong um, is that you can work up to 17 hours per week within the university campus. You're not supposed to work outside the campus, okay? Um, but let's say if you want to do, you have internship um, or something related to your study, then you can check with the department. You can apply for, you know, they will look into your visa differently. But normally, you, during term time, that's from September until June the following year. Um, you're not you're not supposed to work unless you're working with the university campus. Then from July to June, June to August, that's the three months. Then you can apply and work um, outside the university campus as an internship student. But normally, generally speaking, if you come into Hong Kong as a student, you're not supposed to work full time. Okay. 
Perfect. Thank you very much. Anyone who wants to add anything to that? Perfect. Okay, so next question. Do you give any assistance to the students in order to get the visa? Yes, of yeah, course. Maybe we do. Uh, when our students are at, uh, admitted to our programs, uh, the registry of our university will uh, arrange with the individual students because they're admitted uh, freshmen to arrange with the Hong Kong uh, Immigration Department for the student visa. And uh, they will follow up closely individually with each of the freshmen to get everything done. So colleagues may feel free to add for anything. I think that's uh, similar for all the university here. So after uh, issuing the offer and you have accepted the offer and once confirmed, we will start the visa application process from the admission office. So each confirmed offer recipient will receive documents, information, guidelines on the application for visa and we will guide you through all the way. And once the visa sticker is received, we will mail by post to your home address to make sure you will come here. Excellent. Perfect, thank you very much. Um, the next question here is, which English proficiency test do you accept? I think for all of us, again, I think we take the general ones, so IELTS and and or TOEFL is a must, um, if you have an SAT, if you have anything others, um, submit it with your application anyway. Um, the most obviously the most accurate information is looked into our admissions website all the details are listed there um, but generally speaking you know the general qualifications the IELTS, TOEFL, um, SAT these are the ones that we definitely would take but of course, of course among the universities the bands or the the, the grades we take might be varies so again best to check with the website yep just to to add i think uh because of COVID last year um of course right now it's still ongoing uh, if any students we understand that some students are actually affected by closing of uh, test center from TOEFL on, and IELTS so if there are actually some difficulties uh, completing an of TOEFL IELTS uh, we are quite flexible especially last year and this year in terms of uh, uh, accepting English qualifications so my advice general advice is um, if you have you know, because today we are speaking across different uh, people across Middle East that can be coming from a lot of different backgrounds. So uh, the best guess is uh, just write to us. I think we have uh, at each point of each of us have already left some of our emails on the contact. Just write write to us and. Um, these two years, and uh, I, I dare to to say for everybody, uh, we will we are actually all of us are going all out to help any students uh, who help to apply for universities in Hong Kong. So just just write to us, and in some cases we might be able to help. Uh, just tell us any difficulties you might have, and then uh, each and every cases we will actually evaluate them uh, separately on a case by case basis. Excellent. Thank you very, very much. Um, the next question here is, do you have any age limits? I don't think we have. We take anyone who's over 18. Um, usually there are some matured students in Hong Kong uh, that, you know, they, according to UGC, there, there are actually some limits uh, that uh, in rare cases uh, that uh, if we think that, that the students is actually eligible, uh, uh, good students, we still take uh, those uh, and then even the Hong government rules that can be special circumstances that we can offer. We, we have actually tried to uh, in the past, for example, Hong Kong Baptist Universities, we have actually admitted students on a mature student basis who are over 30 years old. So uh, we don't really, you know, age is not too much of a, a limit, uh, but that we, we might actually need to actually get a bit more, more details from the applicants. Excellent. Thank you very much. I think we are reaching um, 
the end of the webinar. So I don't know if you have any uh, final advice or if you want to share your university contact information again. Um, just now I saw another question. I think this one might be applicable to all of us. Um, one of the students is actually asking, is it possible to have a private consultation with the university representative? Um, at, at today's webinar, I think all of us, I'm, 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 I hope I'm actually not misrepresenting any of you, but I'm pretty sure that all of you will be willing to, uh, including myself. If you want to have a private conversation with any of us, just drop us an email and we can arrange a Zoom sessions or arrange a Google Meet sessions to actually okay. speak out to you directly and then, and then in touch with you to see what we can help uh, if you're, especially if you are trying to apply in this September to come to Hong Kong this September. I think we will be very much, very much happy to spend our time to talk to you on one-on-one -on -one to, to get you what is needed for now application yeah, and I so think, just write write an email yeah i think all of us will be joining the fair, yeah, fair. correct <laughs> there's a middle east fair in early april so go there and all of us will be there and you we you can have a personal consultation with each of us i'll be there definitely so <laughs> i'll see you there yes that that is uh, a great um thing to say because we we have a Middle East fair with all of these um, institutions. So you can have one-on-one -on -one conversations and even you can have like a video call with them. So I will share uh, the link for that fair here on the chat right now. And I will also share it on the description box on the YouTube video that I will upload later today to the Student World channel. So uh, you can just register for free and talk to all of our presenters today. And just one last bit, I think before come to the fair, now you actually have a week or so to do some research, um, you know, download our handouts, um, have a read of the brochures, look at our website, do some research on the program that you're interested in, and then come to the fair and then talk to us in details. I think then we will give you more insight or answer any inquiries or anything that you're not sure or we didn't cover in the brochures. Um, then it will be more fruitful for you rather than you just come in and ask the usual question, which is already on the brochures. Yeah. Yeah, just like, um, do you have scholarships? Of course we do. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, that will be so, too general. Yeah. yeah. So download the brochures first visit our websites, um, find out what you're interested in studying, even though you have, let's say, three, four subjects, um, still, we can still able to give you some advice on that. But don't come in and just say, I want to do business or I don't know what I want to study. You know, that's very hard for us to give you any guidance. Excellent. Yes, yes. I just shared with you um, oh, the link for the fair there in the chat um where is it very going to be hosted it will be hosted online it is a virtual platform where you'll be able to see the boots um, videos brochures and talk one -on one with the representatives of each okay so we have reached the end of this live session i really want to thank you all for joining us and i really hope you enjoyed this presentation and that it helped you clarify doubts. And thank you all um, to our presenters today for sharing with us all this valuable information. Thank you guys very much and see you next time. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.